Steve Backshall, everybody. Hello, mate. It's really, really good to be here. Uh, first question, Steve Backshall or Steve Backshall? Uh, Backshall, I think. Backshall? Yes. Okay, yeah. you think? Yeah. Well, I mean, come on, you can call me whatever you want, to be honest. Every, everyone calls me Stevie B. Always has, ever since my, my gran when I was knee-high. Okay. Uh, so your gran called you that. Did What did people call you at school? Mostly Stevie B, unless it was something much more unpleasant. Um, so school wasn't great for you? No, no, I mean... I'm just you know. I, I, I only saying this because it's in your book. Yes. It's got a book, Steve Buckshall, Deep Blue, My Ocean Journey. And in it you said school wasn't the happiest time of your life. Now, people, that seems like a controversial thing today because you're not supposed to tell your kids that. But for, no, me, for me, it wasn't either. But I got a lot out of it. I'm glad I went. So why, why was it not happy for you? Don't turn the interview around, Stevie B. Uh, it wasn't, it was because I didn't know, I wasn't that good at everything, so I just decided that it was good for me because I found the cracks. Right. And when you find something that you can be good at, you cling onto it and you let it drag you along. And you go, this is what I'm supposed to be. Ignore everything else. But, you know, I wasn't an all-rounder. I think mine was almost the exact opposite. So I knew what I loved when I was a kid, mm. and it was it was nature, it was mm. animals, it was wandering out over the Surrey Heaths looking for adders and badger sets and climbing trees. Yep. And that was what had made me happy from when I was knee-high and always would do. But I couldn't ever have said that at my school. I went to a, a comprehensive school where being cool was all about how good you were at basketball, how good you were with the girls, how good you were at fighting. And I wasn't good at any of those things. And you were so, good at recognising a... a, 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 a Blue Jay. I could, well, not in this country, but, well, I, I, but... I, I, I just told I just told, I just told my wife I just told my wife yesterday I saw one in the garden. It could have been a Jay. It, it could was, absolutely it have been a Jay. Blue on its feathers. Well, there you go. There you go. Well, it was a Jay, okay. very much so. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I could have told you the where all the various birds nested yeah. in and around our garden, but I could never have said that in school. Mm. And so I put on a completely do, different persona and pretended I was something else and it wasn't really until my probably early 20s that I started to go hang on a sec what I like is great and it makes me happy and it's and it's easy and it's everywhere and I, I it was a long time for me to embrace that it is hard finding yourself at that age and then but you, you go to university but you went to university did something you didn't really want to be doing yeah. you did English yeah but I kind of in reading a book you're very poetic in the way you write about nature and that's refreshing in reading a book because it's like it really rattles along because I kind of like get wrapped up in it and the thing the way you talk about nature it's beautiful it's really amazing and well, that's so you really are quite poetic hear. in the way you write thank you uh, I'm I'm so glad to hear you say that you know I'm at that kind of early stage where the books literally just come out and I haven't yet started to get people telling me what they think mm. and uh, have you have you written anything you you absolutely should you have to write a memoir or something about your your times but i tell you when you do mm. it's a very um it's a very nervous vulnerable feeling when you put it out there because you put so much effort so much of yourself into it and you have no idea how people are going to react mm. and when they do well it's just a massive sigh of relief and it, it, you know anything negative feels like someone's saying something wounding about the the very heart oh, of you no no but th i've been i've been writing songs for years and yeah it yeah it is it feels like you you get to a point where this is perfect and then someone says oh but you can change this and you go no it's perfect uh what is perfect though i mean my second question at one point in my life, I'd like to have a photograph taken like this. The front cover of your book, you're wearing some kind of tight-fitting neoprene. And have you got stuff stuff down there? Because you're abs, man. You can achieve a tremendous amount with Photoshop, you know. No, that, that, <laughs> that, you, I mean, I just, when he said, how is Steve, when my producer said, how is he? I said, he looks healthy. You look very healthy here. Well, thank you very much. Look, I should that say, photograph, at one point in my life, can I just please, even if it's just for a photo, it, it was it was never my choice to have a picture of me staring off into the middle distance on the front cover of the with book with the sun coming up I know, behind you. I know. It, you, I, I mean, I wanted a picture a great, of an animal on there, but no, it's a great front cover and well, it's a thank great you. book. But um, you do look fantastic. Well, thank you very much, sir. Uh, is that going to draw people? <laughs> I doubt to your it very tour? much. <laughs> Are you going to? Not going to take your top off then. 
People, uh, people always want us to take our tops off and we're not going to, are we? Well, if I was to do it in a kids and family show on stage, then I, I think I'd probably get arrested. OK, let's not go there at the moment. But talking about the <laughs> talk, I, I don't want to No, I'm going to I'm going to get to the tour in the second part of this interview because I want to play a song in between. But um, I, I, just, I just wanted to talk about the sea and your love of the sea because it is specifically about the sea. Right? It is. Um, now. I'm drawn to the sea. I know that I'll end up living by the sea. I know that 100%. I have to. I'm terrified of it. I'm terrified of horses, but I'm also drawn to them. And what's that about? Why are we drawn to something we're terrified about? Well, with very good reason. You know, I, I think the sea is something that has the power to change in an instant from something benign and benevolent mm. and enticing to something utterly terrifying and something that can make you as a human being feel very, very small. And that's one of the reasons why it is so intoxicating. I mean, I find the same thing with, with the big mountains, with right, the okay. Arctic, you know, those places where we as a human being can all of a sudden feel very, very small and fragile. I, I think a nature all of a sudden becomes that more powerful around us are the most exciting places. And I've always had a, a fascination for the ocean for those reasons. But also, I think, because it's the, the, the kind of the lure of the unknown. It's the fact that there is so much that we still don't know about this massive environment and on our doorstep. And it's tangible as well. It's tangible. It's there. Absolutely. People talk about the space and, like you know, Mars and can we go there? And, but that's not that tangible. But this is literally, you can wade out into this. Yes, you can. And at the same time, if you want to really get up the nose of any cosmologist or any oceanographer, yeah. say to them, we know more about the surface okay. of the moon than we do about our deep seas because it's not even close we know the way moon's more boring. about the moon true true but there are new species being found in our deep oceans every single week and many of them are bizarre beyond belief you've got twins i've got twins oh, do you talk about them? sorry have i given them stuff away no no no, okay. no it's, it's not like that's not the surprise okay because <laughs> I, I i kept mine secret for about a year and then i thought to myself why am i keeping it secret it's more it's more interesting if it's a secret i don't give the names away though We've got one of each, and um, I can't wait for them to live by the sea. And I'm gonna live by the sea one day. And you, you're, you've got a desire to live by the sea as well, right? Absolutely. Well, my wife Helen uh, grew up in Penzance. Her entire family, several generations back, are all Cornish through and through. And we always kind of took it for granted uh -huh. that we would live and bring our kids up on a Cornish beach. Not literally on a Cornish beach, but yeah, you know no, what yeah, I mean. No, that, mean. Would, that would be very much a, a part of who they are. And now all of a sudden we're kind of torn between this thing of Helen's training up for the Olympics next year. So right. she kind of needs to be by the, the Olympic centre and I'm sort of dashing around doing tours like this. And and it, all of a sudden those years are ticking away and it hasn't happened yet. And we're kind of going, we should, we're supposed to be in Cornwall. No, there's nothing quite like it. When I used to live in Falmouth and I used to go to this little hidden beach and see the phosphorescence at night, just... And there's nothing quite like it. Brings you to tears thinking about it. It was absolutely beautiful. And I wish I could live that life. But it will happen eventually. Uh, but also I want to give my kids the full experience of living in a city and all that. And I don't know how to juggle that. How do you juggle that? I don't think we're doing a particularly good job of juggling it, to okay. be honest. We're, we're, we are definitely not the uh, the people that you should focus on if it's for juggling well. I think we're doing a disastrous job. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, the kids are pretty happy right now. And I think a lot of why they're happy is that those things that I failed to kind of reconcile when I was a kid about the things that I loved and that made me happy mm. with what everybody else around me might be thinking... Um, I kind of know about now and I know that the things that make me happy are getting outside getting grimy and dirty and sweaty and and going out chasing obscure kinds of birds and snakes in the compost heap and I have the <laughs> opportunity to indoctrinate my, my poor unsuspecting children in exactly that and that there's thing. still stuff to find around here isn't there of course there is of course there is and all the things that I loved as a kid I now get to see I get to do them again apart from anything else uh, but you know pond dipping and rock pooling and climbing trees yeah. and all that good stuff I get to do it again with my kids and also experience it afresh through their eyes most of my love from the sea Steve came from my friend Craig uh, he's my best friend who uh, is a, uh, a marine biologist and he met you uh, in an Outer Hebrides airport a couple of months ago and he said he really annoyed you now I, he's my I best can't believe that's true he, he talks about seaweed a lot uh, he's a bald guy uh, he's quite annoying but he's called Craig and I love him completely and me and him have a seaweed business because seaweed 
is subst- sustainable and amazing, isn't it? That is absolutely true. Yeah. It is. Plus, it's also impossible to annoy me at any time, particularly if I'm in the Outer Hebrides and I, I, I can where, it's remember his happy now. Place. Oh, it's it's a it's an extraordinary place, and it the is the cleanest one- sea in the world cleanest sea in the world uh, i mean you've got to be pretty tough to swim in the in the sea yeah but when oh, you yeah. do it's full of incredible kelp forests that are that filled with gray seals and common seals you might even if you're lucky spot an orca in the distance um i'm going to talk to you about craig after this but i have to go because we, we you have to go because this is the end of the interview i've been told it's, it's it's over but i could talk to you all day and forever i love you completely steve uh i've got to talk i've got to mention your tour ocean Bringing marine dreams to life. So you're doing that. You go on tour, and I've seen the list, and I could I could read it out, but this would take another 15 minutes. What's this tour about? So uh, it's about trying to bring the ocean to life on stage. So all those things that you love about the ocean, the the smells, the sounds, the the experience of you know of everything about ocean life, trying to make that happen on stage, which is a challenge. And you can do that in Guildford. Well, I mean, there are certain things like scale that we really Mm -hmm. struggle with but now we have giant life-sized um whales that we can bring on stage we have life-size great white sharks we have uh, the most amazing footage uh, stage science experiments stunts tricks things that go wrong um it's an absolute blast where am i going to come then which one are you doing all in london uh, we, we have a few in London, yeah. Uh, you really do. Uh, tell you what, if you want to check out where it is, uh, go to stevebackshall.com. Deep Blue, My Ocean Journey is out now. That's his book. But the uh, the stage tour is called Ocean, Bringing Marine Dreams to Life.